Hello everyone, I hope you're having a great day today and thank you for being here. Uh, we are from the Faculty of Economics and Business, Universitas Indonesia, and we're going to talk about an interesting accounting case for, for the NESB course. We're from group 12 and our members consist of Fata as moderator, George as the consite, and Stefan, me, myself as pro side. And moving on, firstly, my friend Fata will talk about the background of the case. Yeah, so in this case, uh, we're going to discuss further about the the players, uh, but I mean we're going to like uh, anonymously, and I think it's just like a a broad picture, and also give a further analysis. I will I will talk about I will talk about their opinions and also uh, related theory uh, according to our courses in NESB. So uh, we're going to give an overview first about this case. So this mess this matters I, I think I would say this matter is quite unique. I mean not really unique but uh is good for our study. So this matter concerned a company A's violation of auditor independency requirement during a certain period. So uh the company A uh is the accounting firm and I mean we sum we give assumption that uh, a company uh, accounting firm is A, B as the client, and also the C as the accounting network. So, following that, a company a uh, company A is accounting a firm that provides uh, like a financial service, including auditing, and also member of the company C, which is the accounting networks. And uh, company C provides the provide the company B with some purchasing price allocation valuation service in uh, in relation to acquire intangible assets through a certain period. So uh, this is a non-audit service. And however, the, the, the company C, which is the client, assign a company A to do the audit service. However, uh, the company A has, has marketed their, com their company as a member of the company C. So, uh, company C, they they like open like a membership to be their alliance. So uh, it is just to give their brand names, so it can enhance the work valuation of a company A. So uh, as a as an audited as an auditor for company C, uh, company A has marketing their their company as member of company C, and. Hence, it gives a reasonable assumption that company A had an interest in the quality, the quality of company C valuation work. So, uh, company A val violated a uh, rule and standard requiring auditor to maintain in, uh, independency from its audit client. And so, uh, they failed to meet the regulations and requirement and they uh, get a fines for about two hundred dollars and uh, and also additional punishment. And so, following the uh, case overview, I will I would like to uh, give the first questions. I think uh, this is about their opinion. I also like to consider their opinion. And question for number one is that: Do you think there's a reasonable justification to conduct such an act? I think I would like to start with George. Over to George. Uh, so, in my opinion, I don't think uh, there is any reasonable justification because under no circumstances should a company break the rules for its own benefit because the rules that are made by any government or any uh, auditing or regulatory board are made to maintain order and ensure that there is fairness and equity for all parties involved. This includes all auditing firms and all the companies that are employing these auditing firms. So violation of any rule would mean an unfair benefit to one party and a loss to another. And in this case, I think uh, there's an unfair benefit to company A and to some extent company C while there is a loss for company B. So uh, maybe I want to recap what you said before. So you disagree because there are some, uh, there are some parties that, uh, uh, what what do you say? Uh, have unfair benefit oh yeah unfair benefits so <clears throat> oh yeah I, I could understand that um maybe i want to like uh 
Stefan, do you have some uh, another perspective? Um, yes, I have a different opinion with <coughs> with George because I believe there is a reasonable justification to conduct such an act because even though the violation of PCA OBE rules and standards is severe, there is a reasonable um, justification. The justification is that Company A's alliance with Company C was driven by the desire to enhance their capabilities and provide better services to their clients. The violation also occurred in a complex regulatory environment and Company A has taken steps to address the issue and ensure that in the future they will comply with the regulatory and the laws. Um, I think it is important to consider those factors when evaluating the reasonable justification for their conduct. Yeah, but I think, I mean, if, I would say if the company really, uh, I, I mean, if the regulator have their evidence regarding the violation, I'll, I'll say uh, it's still violated and uh, the company, uh, in this case, I mean, company A, the accounting firm, should be punished. I think that's really, I mean, yeah, that's reasonable. So, uh... I also want to follow we follow uh, my previous overview case. It is mentioned if I if I'm not mistaken, I I, I said I think two hundred dollars, but it is two hundred thousand dollars fine for a company A. So, uh, it's quite I, I would say it's quite severe uh, for some cases. So, uh, and. My question is for their misconduct they were punished uh two hundred thousand US dollars with interest accrued and also like additional uh little sanctions. So my question is do you think that the penalty given to company A is appropriate or too harsh or too light? Uh, maybe first George maybe uh, for me personally I don't think uh that the punishment or the penalty is appropriate. Because I think the financial penalty of two hundred thousand dollars is not enough, as it is too light for a company as large as Company A. Because Company A is a very large firm in North America, as it is ranked uh, as one of the top forty-five accounting firms in the United States, and we can assume that due to the status and size, Company A is not going to be heavily impacted by this financial penalty of two hundred thousand dollars, and it might not be enough of a deterrence or. It will not be enough to de- disincentivize them from conducting another violation again if that violation would uh, bear a larger benefit for them. And also, because of that, the non-financial sanctions are also not harsh enough as the punishment should be harsh enough to prevent future violations. Okay, so I think I get what you mean. So, so I think you assume if the company A is big, the the sanction also need to get bigger, but if the company A is small, it should be should be get smaller. Uh, yes, so I think uh, the financial penalty should be proportional to the size of the company and their financial power and financial backing. Okay. <coughs> and thank you, George. I think I want to move to Stefan. Do you have any other perspective? Um. Yes, I have a different opinion with George because I'm not highlighting or focusing on the nominal of the amount of the sanction but by the board giving the punishment in whatever or any form to the company A is already give a strong message and a prevention to accounting industry about the importance of upholding ethical standards and maintaining independence in audit engagements. It also reflects the seriousness of the violation and the need for accountability. The penalty is not overly harsh as it takes into consideration the specific circumstances of the case and the firm's willingness to cooperate and implement corrective measures. By imposing this penalty, the board ensures that Company A and other accounting firms understand the consequences of non-compliance and are motivated to improve their practices to prevent similar violations in the future. That's my opinion. So, uh, the violation in this uh, case overview is that there's an assumption that Company A uh may treat differently company C because they because they have a uh, interest in company in company C. So like I said before it is common that companies have conducted their violation under unconscious act or they don't know what they do wrong. In some cases uh some of them only be given a warning letter. 
and I want to ask your opinion about this. And uh, should the company uh, be given grace or some level of understanding on why they conduct the act? I think I will start uh, from Josh again. What do you think, Josh? Uh, so, from in my opinion, uh, no. I don't think companies should be given any grace or understanding on why they conducted this violation in the first place. Because I'm going to take a look from the deontological perspective. So the deontological view focuses on the nature and means of the action, not the end result. And it determines that the morality or right or wrong of that thing is determined from how it was done. In this case, uh, the ends do not justify the means and the fruit of this action is considered wrong as to acquire such a thing requires the violation of rules. And rules, because rules are meant to keep, keep society stable and fair, this violation by company A means that they and company C gain an unfair advantage at the cost of the independence of the audit process for company C. So in my opinion, no, I don't think they should be given grace or any certain level of understanding. Okay, uh, uh, Stefan, do you have any other perspective? Um, yes, I think company like company A should be given grace or some level of understanding because the violation occurred with, within the context of their alliance with company C, company C aimed at en- enhancing audit services. Navigating a complex regulatory environment can be challenging and company A has taken, re- taken responsibility, cooperated with the board and committed to improving, improving compliance. Granting some grace and understanding encourage company to learn from their mistakes, enhance their practices, and positively contribute to the accounting industry. I think that's why the company A should be given grace or some understanding. Well, uh, I guess in other sector, I would say it is possible for uh, like regulator to give grace because uh, they don't uh, require a specific rule. But I would say for accounting industry, we already established a rule so that uh, they bear like a responsibility to follow that rule. So I would say, in this case, because all the company, I mean the company A, the accounting firms uh, is in accounting industry. So I would say they, they need to bear uh, the, the sanctions because they already, uh, it's like they already have bond between the accounting regulation so no matter what you do, you have to take the take the sanctions because you already uh like take the bond between uh accounting regulation. So uh it's also like uh I would say before the two hundred thousand US dollar fine. I mean it is quite large for some companies, but the if the company is like really big, huge, like multinational accounting firm is, I think it's considered considerable, considerable, like small amount. So, uh, like I said before, so in the, for company A, should they, uh, is the fine for $200,000 uh, is sufficient or they need to like uh, another punishment like permanent ban? Maybe from George Bush. So personally, uh, like I said before, uh, company A should be given a larger sum of money, larger than two hundred thousand dollars, as they are one of the largest accounting firms in the United States, and they also have the possibility of being backed up by Company C and their accounting alliance. Uh, so they may be backed up financially and politically to, and possibly, uh, which might. Uh, result in the fine not being enough of a deterrence to prevent them from uh, conducting another violation again. Okay. Uh, <coughs> maybe I want to move to step one first. Okay. Um, I think the amount of two hundred thousand of the fine is already enough to maintaining the integrity of financial reporting. Violations of independent rules can undermine investor confidence in financial statements. The fine sends a clear message to other accounting firms about the importance of compliance and of adhering to auditor independent standards. And for the Nurfata questions about additional punishment like a permanent ban, I don't agree because it's too severe and not proportional for to the violation. But instead, I have an 
idea for the additional punishment is um, the board can implement a three warning system where if a firm is given three warnings for violations of auditing regulations they can be suspended or have the uh, auditing list licenses of the management or supervisor in charge of the job be revoked okay she so you like uh, give optional about the three three months ban if I am yeah. wrong <clears throat> that's I mean that's a good idea uh, what do you think George? do you have like uh, mm-hmm. another punishment or like to make uh, today don't do it in the future uh, I agree with Stefan Sanzo uh, of giving uh, creating a system of the three warning system where a firm can be given three warnings before they are given a suspension or the individual responsible have their jobs revoked revoked I also believe that they should be given other punishments such as extensive tra- training on the regulations of the accounting board in maintaining independence and uh, pro- keeping quality control well. Okay, uh, I think I think I also mentioned before, I think that the vines should be based on rules. So no matter how big you are, you get that sanction. So I think also, so, uh, yeah, I think the $200 is $200,000 is fine for me. But I think I also agree with both uh, my teammates here that uh, it is required for company A to uh, sanction with additional additional party plan like three months ban because, but. Uh, I think the permanent ban is too severe for them, so I think like maybe six to six to nine or three to six maybe is, is sufficient for them. And I, w- I want to also talk about the membership. Like I said before, uh, company A is one of the member of uh, alliance in company C. So uh, in this issue, with company A membership. Uh, in the company C is a significant factor in their violation of auditor independency requirements. I mean, I, will st- I will start to, let's say first Stefan. Okay, I think company A alliance or membership with company C created a mutual interest with the audit client, which compromised their ability to maintain independence. The firm's marketing efforts tied to the company C brand, brand name demonstrate that they use their association to gain business um, that's why making their independence is questionable. I think that's my opinion upon the question. Okay, uh, maybe I want to ask George first because before I ask question. Um, in my honest opinion, I think I agree with Stefan as there may be other significant factors that uh, might not be mentioned, but I believe the largest factor in this case is the alliance of company A uh, with company C. Okay. I think I, I think uh, I get what you both mean. So, uh, I think I want, I want to just jump. I think I mean uh, I actually said a question, but uh, you actually have uh, answered in the previous question. So, uh, I want to talk about the the marketing strategy. So, like I said before, in this case, uh the company A via the standard practice due to the marketing strategies. As I mentioned before, their marketing strategies is touting their company to company C, which it reflects a conflict of interest where company A, the quantum firm, and company B, the client, uh, especially company A, because company C reputation can directly affect company A's value. So if the company C, which is in this case a quantum network, uh, have their have a bad performance so the company a value will also drops uh, such marketing practice give a double edge sword so you are depend on uh, other brands so when their brands is uh, has a higher value so you your value uh, also goes up but when you go when the value down you also go down so here's the thing do you believe that touting your company to a certain organization is the best way of marketing? So, uh, maybe judge first. Mm, so, in my opinion, no. I don't think touting is a good 
uh, marketing strategy or marketing technique for a company to advertise or market their products or organization simply because that the action of touting can be seen as a negative thing and it may not result in a positive image or perception perception of the company because touting uh, the definition of touting is uh, simply a way uh, for people to advertise and sell their products by aggressively and continuously telling people about the company and the product and this is to make sure that people really remember the product and that through repetition the product and the company is stored and is remembered in the long-term memory of the humans people's brains <laughs> and so however the strategy might backfire because these repetitious and continuous promotion of the company and their goods can annoy people and bother them to the point where they are committed to not buying the product or any product from the company and so in this case i don't think uh, company a touting their membership or their alliance with company c is a good thing because it might backfire uh, because of the double edged sword uh, effect yeah i would say that's true be yeah because the the dilemma in this case is double edged sword so it you are really depends on uh other company you uh you can i mean you should be independent as a company because you are the one that uh doing your business so uh maybe I want to another George because you said that you don't agree maybe do you have like another opinion regarding the good marketing or maybe you have like uh like uh experience in the field Uh, so personally no i don't have an experience in marketing but i think uh, s- uh, some other marketing techniques that company a can do to strengthen their brand and their company is by doing good work and showing people that they have done good work uh try to acquire certain <coughs> licenses and certifications and uh acquire uh good brands uh good branding by promoting properly and doing good conduct so that people can see that this the company A that company A is actually a good company that does good work and to some extent company A can even be socially responsible so that commu- the local community and North America and the world even can see that uh, company A is a sustainable and a responsible Uh, accounting company and that because of that they are attracted and they want to work with company A, A and employ them i think that would be a better marketing te- technique instead of touting their alliance with company C okay that's that's such a good analysis uh, thank you George maybe uh before i comment on uh, your uh, answer i want to uh, ask Stefan first do you have any like perspective Okay, I have a different perspective with George because I think touting your company through strategic partnership is an effective marketing strategy because it could enhance credibility and attracts clients who value the partner's reputation. Such partnerships offer valuable resources, knowledge sharing, and networking opportunities, contributing to overall growth and success by exchanging best practices and specialized specialized expertise. I think it's an effective way to stand out from other competitors and attract valuable clients. Well, I I think I agree with both of you. So, uh, I think I can come with a conclusion here from both of you. I think that touting your company to certain organizations, I think it is good if you just start your business. So, uh, when you are in uh, when you are in small business area, I think it's good. But when you are already big. like like uh, other big companies i think uh, it is bad uh, marketing strategies because you cannot go you cannot get further than your uh, organization when the orga- when the organization so let's say uh, in this case the company a and company b it means that the company a successful cannot surpass the company c because they always uh, following company c so i would say that the bad marketing if if we assume company a is a big company that's bad marketing but let's say if just they just started a they started a company the company so i think it is just i mean fair is good not really bad either and so we move to 
the question about theoretical so this theory based on our uh, NASP courses and for the first question I think uh, I want to relate it with the ethical standard the broad standard ethical so there are five aspects in the ethical sta quoting standard the first is uh, integrity and the integrity objectivity due competence and confidential confidentiality and also professional behavior and i think for all the uh, accounting industries or or all audit or all audit and uh, accounting companies should uh, should not should not violate all the ethical standard because they can get sanctions uh, if they even uh, will violate uh, only one of them so uh, based uh, what I said before uh, on the article conduct uh, what aspect do you think company a violated maybe I want to start from Stefan first um, okay um, I think from the case um Company A is violate two of the code of ethics for professional accountants, which are due competence, um, professional and due competence, or, and professional behavior. Because as a reg registered public accounting firm, Company A is expected to adhere to high ethical standards and maintain independence in their audit engagements. By auditing work performed for an issuer audit client, by another accounting firm within their accounting client uh, alliance, Company A is failed to exercise due competence in ensuring the independence and objectivity of their audit reports. This also lack of professional behaviors, um, re professional behaviors raises concerns about their ability to provide accurate and reliable financial information to stakeholders like banks, investors, lenders, management, and other else compromising the integrity of the auditing profession as a whole. Ethical conduct in accounting requires professionals to act with integrity, objectivity, and professional skepticism, ensuring that their work is free from bias and conflict of interest. Company ease violation undermines these principles and erodes trust in the accounting profession. It is crucial for accounting firms to uphold ethical con conduct to maintain the public's confidence in financial reporting and protect the interests of investors and other stakeholders like banks, management, lenders like what I said before. I think those two is one of two, uh, two of five that company A violated of the code of ethics. Uh, yeah, I have, I have the same opinion with uh, Mr. Stefaner. I mean, it is quite clear that uh, due competence is the one that really uh company a violated so because uh they cannot uh they cannot they cannot uh, do their job properly so they uh violated the do uh compen do care and competence and also it means that also they uh, violate personal behavior uh how about you George do you have any other opinion uh i think uh company a violated integrity, objectivity, and professional behavior code of the code of ethics professional accountants. This is because, uh, firstly, they violated integrity because they were not straightforward to the client in terms of their relations and independence with companies B, company B's accounting firm, company C, which has a strong relationship with company A because company A is a member of company C's uh, accounting firm alliances, which results in bias and threat to independence. Company A also failed to maintain its independence in this case with Company B and Company C. <coughs> they also violated uh, the objectivity code as they had an interest and something to gain with having a good audit of Company B because Company A wanted to be better associated with Company C which will boost their popularity uh, and an image, and image as an accounting firm associated with Company C and their network of accounting firms. This results in bias and bias and influence in the formulation of an audit opinion uh, positively towards company C. And lastly, company A also violated the professional behavior code as they failed to meet with the regulations on independence and on the quality control standards of the PCAOB or the accounting board. 
and their breach of independence has resulted in the lack of implementation and monitoring of the quality of the audit on company B. Okay, uh, I guess from both uh, my two friends here, I think we have four ethical standard that company A violated. So first is integrity and then objectivity, due competence and also professional behavior. I think, uh, yeah, yeah, I think it is fair. Uh, I would say I'll agree with uh, both of my friends. We, uh, that company A violated uh, those four ethical conducts. And also maybe I want to add they, it is clear that they did not uh, violate the confidence, confidentiality because there's no uh, any uh, any leak act, any leakage action that company A uh, do to leak the their client information. So yeah, it, it is clear that confidentiality is uh, not being violated. So uh, I think I want to move to my uh, last question. This is my last question. This is also related into our NESP topic. Uh, it is also related to the theory. It is about bias. So, uh, I think it is also been mentioned by both of you and also me. Uh, I mean, I start with the overview first. The there's an assumption where company A may uh, violate the, the ethical standard because uh, it can be a bias. So, but. Uh, whether they are deliberately biased or unconsciously, uh, uh, maybe it's up uh, upon themselves. So, uh, my question is: Do you believe there's a uh, unconscious bias involved in the situation? Maybe I want to start with Stefan first. Um, okay, I think since I stand in the pro side, I think yes, unconscious bias could have played a role in company A's violation of auditor independence requirements. Um, these, there are two assumptions and evidence that can be seen from the case. The first one is the bias may have influenced their inclination to favor their company's alliance membership and potentially affect, affecting their judgment in auditing other, other alliance members. And the second assumption and evidence is the confirmation, the confirmation bias might, might have led them to downplay independence issues due to preconceived beliefs about the benefits of their alliance. Acknowledging and addressing, addressing unconscious, unconscious biases is essential for promoting fairness, objectivity, and ethical conduct in, in the accounting profession, contributing to a more inclusive and unbiased environment that upholds high ethical standards for accounting profession. Okay, uh, uh, how about you, George? Do you have any other opinion? Um, I don't think there is unconscious bias in the case of company A because I believe there is con conscious bias instead because in this case it is well believed that company A would have made the audit opinion biased towards company C to, obs to, obs to obtain selfish benefits to company A. I believe this is conscious or explicit bias not unconscious bias because uh, regarding uh, our class in NESP uh, unconscious bias that we may have come to understand is more towards a uh, bias that uh, that is stereotypes and groups of people caused by experience and external external factors which is implanted uh, which implant certain images and prejudice within the individual this is not the type of bias that I believe is present in the case and that the bias that's present is more conscious because there's something to gain from being biased in terms of creating the audit opinion for company B. Okay. Uh, uh, this is the thing. I, I think I agree with both answer uh, because there might be a bias and also unconscious bias at the same time because uh, maybe there, uh, because, uh, you know, in commonly uh, companies set a uh, team contest of more than one, of course, maybe one of them uh, doing unconscious bias and maybe some of them doing uh, bias deliberately. So, uh, I mean, it might be happen uh, if that's the case. 
so yeah i think that's uh all the questions that i have right now for this case so maybe i just want to wrap up a little bit from all our conversation so uh the company a in this case clearly violated the uh some ethical standard and also some regulations uh and therefore they they are uh it is uh right for company a to uh get sanctions so for the sanction itself uh i think we agree that uh that amount the the vines amount is sufficient regardless of how big or how small they are because the audit the audit board need to uh give the sanctions based on what they uh violate not uh, based on the uh the company itself and also maybe we also need some additional punishment like uh semi permanent ban or uh, about 6 until 6 to 9 or maybe 3 to 6 months ban uh we also agree that the permanent ban is too severe because uh they can the company cannot jump into into the same industry again in the future and for in our theory we see that uh company a has violated four of the ethical standard including integrity confidentiality and objectivity due competence and also professional behavior and Oh, sorry. They they did not uh they did not violate confidentiality, but they did integrity, objectivity, due competence, and also professional behavior. And for lastly, it seems they also do some biases, uh, including bias and also unconscious bias. So uh, I think that's all for our video here. Uh, and disclaimer: this is only for our uh, study material. And so if there's uh, other mistake in our opinion, maybe uh, uh, you can tolerate, uh, I hope you can tell it, tolerate that. And uh, that's all for today. Uh, I hope you are enjoy uh, watching our video and thank you.